The left has a saying that representation matters, which means the more on-screen depictions of certain kinds of characters, lifestyles, and behaviors, the more the general public warms up to accepting those kinds of things in real life. And part of paving the path for what they hope will be a woman president of the United States someday involves producing a variety of shows focusing on a female character who holds that position. In the years preceding Hillary Clinton's long-expected attempt at a presidential bid, there were almost a dozen television shows that had a woman president as the central part of the plot. Gina Davis starred in Commander-in-Chief, a short-lived series from 2005 to 2006, where she was originally the vice president, but then had to take over after the president died of a brain aneurysm. Let's pray to God that life doesn't imitate art, because now we're obviously in a situation where something like that could actually happen. In Fox's Thriller 24, the show had a female president for two seasons. Julia Louis-Dreyfus ascended to the presidency in her series, VP, after the president resigned, leaving her in charge. And that was just the beginning. State of Affairs, which aired for just one season on NBC, depicted a black woman as the president. And CBS's political drama Madam Secretary revolved around a female Secretary of State, obviously modeled after Hillary Clinton. And at the end of the fifth season, the character decided to run for president and won. The following season, which was its last, the series focused on the new female president, but kept the name Madam Secretary. But Hollywood's feminist propaganda goes far beyond hoping to normalize the idea of a woman president. Liberals are obsessed with uprooting the traditional gender roles of men as providers and protectors and women as nurturers and caretakers. They are determined to empower women at any cost and embrace the disastrous effects on the family dynamics and society as a whole that their radical agenda is causing. They despise traditional families and gender roles and are on a mission to undermine the very foundational relationships of human society. To feminists, being a stay-at-home mom is slavery Women cooking for their family is oppression under the patriarchy, and all men are scumbags, but having unprotected sex with an endless line of them while avoiding any committed long-term relationships is their idea of an ideal life. That's what Hollywood wants women to believe. Their latest plan to promote women empowerment is hijacking popular franchises and then completely changing the major characters and turning good old-fashioned action films into social justice warrior propaganda, not just swapping male characters for females or adding strong female leads, but by also portraying men as inept and incompetent losers who always need to be rescued from their own stupidity. I'm sure you've noticed that over the last few years, numerous popular film franchises from Star Wars and Ghostbusters to Mad Max and even The Terminator have all been ruined by gender swaps and feminist themes nauseatingly dominating the plots of sequels and spin-offs. Actress Gina Davis even started a non-profit research organization to study gender representation in media. The Institute on Gender in Media, as it's called, is obsessed with monitoring the number of women versus men in TV shows and movies, and tracking what percentage of them have speaking roles and how many of them have power. Their website says that they're the only organization working collaboratively with the entertainment industry to engage, educate, and influence the creation of gender-balanced on-screen portrayals, reducing harmful stereotypes and creating an abundance of unique and intersectional female characters in entertainment. <laughs> Another pointless project the Institute on Gender and Media has been working on is a computer program that checks scripts for gender-biased language to make sure that they're inclusive. Not only does the software scan scripts for words and phrases like fireman, postman, and mankind, but it also produces a report on the percentage of characters who are people of color and even LGBTQ, so the writers and producers can make sure that their projects are diverse enough. Some morons in the marketing department for Anheuser-Busch thought it would be a good idea for Bud Light to promote the supposed wage gap in an incredibly unfunny ad featuring Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen a few years ago. Also, Burger King launched an ad campaign to raise awareness about gender inequality by using a hidden camera showing actors playing employees serving actual customers. And when women ordered chicken strips, which they called chicken fries, they were served the chicken strips in a pink box and told that they had been charged a few dollars more than the men for the pink box. When they complained, the fake employee started lecturing them about the feminist urban legend that some women's products supposedly cost more than their male equivalent just because they're pink. <laughs> this is an even dumber myth than the gender pay gap. 
They call this the pink tax. Why not just promote their chicken fries and say they taste great and are on sale, you may be wondering? Well, that's what a normal person or company would do, but a large portion of society has been infected with the liberal pathogen. The United Nations launched a campaign called the Unstereotype Alliance, which is dedicated to encouraging major corporations to include feminist messages in their commercials. They say advertising is a particularly powerful driver to change perceptions and impact social norms. So now it's impossible to escape liberal propaganda even when watching commercials for chicken strips from a fast food restaurant. Feminism is like an old tool that has outlived its usefulness, but instead of discarding it and appreciating what it accomplished during the time it was needed, feminists have continued trying to advance their movement in our modern era. Feminism has gone through four different phases, or waves as they're called, since its first incarnation in the early 1900s when women banded together to demand the right to vote, women's suffrage. In the 1960s and 70s, the second wave rose up to fight against the lack of women in political positions, and they were successful in popularizing birth control pills and legalizing abortion, but for some power-hungry feminists, there was more work to be done to dismantle the patriarchy. They continued pushing forward in the 1990s, the third wave, where they continued to get more women into leadership positions in government and corporations, often simultaneously complaining about men continuing to object women while doing everything they could to artificially boost their sex appeal and use it to their advantage in every possible situation. Then came the fourth wave of feminism, which is completely unrecognizable from the first two waves, which actually had a legitimate purpose and goals. Around 2012, not coincidentally coinciding with social media becoming a fixture in most people's lives, the fourth wave of feminism hit the internet like a tsunami of insanity. Through social media, crazies from across the country were able to connect with each other and affirm one another's bizarre ideas about their abnormal lifestyles and celebrate their mental illnesses. They now come up with new causes to fight for online, like free bleeding, which means not wearing tampons or pads during their period, in order to raise awareness for periods, as if we're not already painfully aware of them, and smashing the scale, which is literally them just celebrating obesity. The most radical feminists, the one with blue or purple hair, eventually turn into cat ladies, single, childless, alone, and filled with regret and hate. As their looks fade, so does their ability to attract new mates, thus leading them to the inevitable downward spiral of despair, which is then used as fuel to reaffirm their beliefs that men have ruined the world and their lives. See why well, you should read my books? There's so much great stuff in there I can't get into on YouTube. So order my latest, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture, from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out.